Today I'm going to show you how we do a vinyl chip, epoxy, and polyaspartic garage floor. And I'm also going to tell you the one big thing that I completely forgot to talk about in my last video comparing epoxy and polyurea floors. The first thing we have to do is grind the concrete. I always like to bring a generator with us to every single job site. That way we can pull up to the job, we can plug our grinder in and start right away without having to go inside the homeowner's house to hook our grinder up to their panel box. Once the concrete is ground, we're ready to apply our epoxy primer. We always color match our primer to match whatever chips we're using, so we go through this on every job. I'm gonna take the weights off real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Let's go. I'm gonna hook a lot. Okay. It's like lead. Kidding. It is lead. It's a joke. Piece of cake. Woo! We always have a lot of concrete dust to get up, but we always make sure the floor is really clean, and then we bag all the dust up and we haul it away. Bags. No pressure, Corey. No pressure. But it needs to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's my track record. Or to be on top. I can get you close. Keep on getting one to them. Every time? Yeah. <laughs> So this is a thing that I forgot to mention in my other video comparing polyurea and epoxy primers. We use an epoxy vapor barrier as our primer. This particular primer that we use is rated to hold down up to eight pounds of moisture vapor coming through that concrete slab. And the problem with using a polyspartic like that or a polyurea or even a traditional epoxy is that they don't have vapor barrier properties. And that's usually the leading cause of concrete coating failures is moisture coming through the concrete, causing the coating to not be able to bond through the concrete. I made a video that gives a whole list of reasons that we don't use polyurea products as a primer. If you wanna check that out, I will leave a link to that video at the end of this video. We like to put down the epoxy primer at around 160 square feet per gallon. Then once we get that squeegeed out, we back roll the entire floor just to make sure the epoxy is smooth before we start broadcasting the chips. I was excited about this one because we're using a new chip blend for the very first time. This particular color has multi-size flakes throughout the entire batch. Ordinarily we just throw a quarter inch wide flakes across the whole floor. But this blend has chips that vary from probably like a sixteenth of an inch up to like, I don't know, probably three eighths of an inch. So the different sizes of vinyl flakes really gives the floor a natural look when you look at it. It kind of looks like granite or a trazo or something like that. I like to stop the epoxy floor to where it ends directly where the door lands on the concrete. And then once we finish for the day, we pull the tape up on the edge of the floor. We'll put clamps on the rails that the garage door rides on. And that way we can pull the garage doors down and it can rest on those clamps on the rails. And then we can hang plastic outside to keep rain from getting on it in case it rains at night. Got a new van wrap. Pretty psyched, we look kind of, kind of professional now. Okay, this is the next day. All we have to do is clean all the excess chips off the floor, and then we're gonna scrape the floor to get it smooth, and then we're gonna be ready to put down our polyaspartic top coat.
I mentioned earlier in the video that this job is actually in Eden, North Carolina, which is quite a little ways from where we are from in Central Virginia. But I love doing jobs like this because this project actually came from YouTube. So uh, Kelly down in Eden, North Carolina saw us on YouTube. Um, and that, that makes the process so easy because he already knows who we are. He's already familiar with our business practices. Um, he just texted me some photos of his garage along with the dimensions. We sent him a price and then here we are a few weeks later doing the garage floor for him. It's pretty cool. And I'm really pumped with how this turned out. I really like the multi-size flakes because it looks really natural. Plus, I just like doing something different every once in a while. I'm glad that we're able to add this to our arsenal of products that we can offer to our customers now. We always try to put the polyaspartic top coat down around 130 square feet a gallon. And then you can see here at the end, we, we were just a little bit short, so we had to make an extra batch. And then when Troy poured the batch out, he actually poured too much out. And um, I want to show you this little tip that I learned on how to get the excess material off of the floor. Too much? You don't have too much, do you? Yeah. Hold on, I can show you how to do it. Let me... I got this from Josh Jones at Prepmaster. And um, man, it used to be such a pain to get extra material off the floor. So, uh, I'm glad I know this. And I'm glad Josh showed it to us. And I'm also happy to pass it on to y'all. Think of that method. If you want to know why we install an epoxy and polyaspartic floor instead of a polyurea floor, you can check this video out right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.